G'day guys, just a quick one on salt, hypertension, and beta cells, and the differences between two elements of salt, one chloride and one sodium. Now, for a very long time, we've been told that sodium will increase blood pressure. So we've been basically bashed over the head about it for a very long time. And we're also being told that basically, um, you know, carbs are at fault, you know, all these sort of other things are at fault. It's apparently something that doesn't even raise insulin is like fat is more at fault than, you know, we hear all this garbage continuously it doesn't, it becomes sort of annoying. But let's look at some of this old sort of, an old study that I came across of people that, you know, would are sick. They're obviously, you know, in a diabetic, pre-diabetic sort of state with very high blood pressure, you know, they're not healthy people. Um, they basically have underlying conditions of hypertension, um, and probably pre-diabetes and all that, they're engaging the Randall cycle, they're probably insulin resistant, all these lovely things that create a lot of these conditions. And in that sort of environment, you know, when you throw in sodium, it's very easy to see um, certain reactions or certain effects happen and then to demonize but they did have an insight in this one, which was really interesting, the sort of angle that may elucidate that it's not sodium that's actually driving it, but it's insulin. And it does have a helper, um, one that people would not realize was the keys. Now, let me just share. Okay, now let's look at this. This study is an old study from 1987, so quite some time back. And they're looking at salts, sensitivity, essential hypertension in men. So I don't have the full amount, I can't get access to it, but that's irrelevant for what we're really focused on. Let's look, let's look at the abstraction. We investigated whether the Ionic components of orally administered sodium salt can influence the salt capacity to increase blood pressure in five men with essential hypertension in whom blood pressure was normal with restricted restrictions of dietary sodium chloride to 10 millimoles per day, 0.23 grams of sodium per day, oral administration of sodium chloride for seven days at 250 um, millimoles per day, 5.52 of sodium per day, induce significant increases in systolic and diastolic blood pressure of 16, which is 160, um, plus or minus two, um, eight, which is a plus or minus two in the millimole range, so, and, uh, you know, they attributed initially that sort of effect, because that's a, a quite a big increase from 0.2, um, from a quarter of a gram, right up to five and a half grams of sodium, quite a bit. But at the end of the day, you know, yes, it was, but it wasn't sort of in a pathological level. And these people are insulin resistant and everything else. But it's the following stuff that's interesting. The an equal mole, which is an equal amount, which is what they bloody talk, amount of sodium given as sodium citrate induced no change in blood pressure. Let me just say that again. And equal amount of sodium given in the form of sodium citrate induced no, absolutely no change in blood pressure. So sodium does not cause it, even in people that are insulin resistance, Randall cycle activated, you know, very sick, pre-diabetic, hypertensive, 
and sodium had no effect. Let me just say that again, no fucking effect. Okay, replacing supplement to sodium chloride with the equivalent amount of sodium as sodium citrate abolished the increase in blood pressure induced by sodium chloride. Okay, so by using sodium citrate rather than sodium chloride, it basically eliminated the issue. So it's not the sodium ion that's actually having that effect. It is actually the, it looks like it's the chloride. Now we, know, we need chloride for our stomach acid, low pH, and there is a pH issue related to that, but I'm not gonna go into the biochemistry. Um, this is just to basically go into the relationship between how it interacts with beta cells. But uh, both salts induce substantial comparable um, sodium retention, which is, you know, if, so, if somebody's actually high insulin resistant, they're going to have some sodium retention. We know that happens. Weight gain, we know that happens. Um, but the good thing is suppression of renin activity. Basically, the renin angiotensin system suppressed. That means you're not pushing up blood pressure and you're not basically pushing up the cortisol. So do you see what I mean? So the sodium in both forms, both salts, did not actually activate the, you know, you know, the suppression. So you've basically got comparable weight that and suppression both induce substantial suppression of plasma renin activity. So the angiotensin system, that means your kidneys activating the renin angiotensin system in order to basically force blood pressure up, which is what it does. So if, you, if you're low on sodium, it will deliberately engage that. That also pushes up cortisol. This is why the stress cortisol can actually be brought down with sodium, which I've been telling you for ages, you know, you want to de-stress, consume, you know, this is another reason why the keto flu, the keto sort of, you know, this is the whole reason why idiots um, in the, you know, in the sort of pro sugar environment are always criticizing people on low carb diet. Oh, your cortisol is going to go through the roof and you're going to have all these stress, you know, well, the reality is if you get enough fucking sodium, you're not going to have that pro problem because it basically suppresses it. it. It eliminates that problem. It eliminates the blood pressure problem and eliminates basically on a low carbohydrate diet, it eliminates also the problem of engaging the renin angiotensin system and increasing blood pressure and water retention and all that other stuff. Okay, so that's quite clear. And this is in very hypertensive people we're getting these results, let alone normal people. And plasma aldosterone as well, which is also part of all that sort of you know, increasing you know, those pathways. But supplemental sodium chloride in increased plasma volume and urinary excretion of calcium, where sodium citrate didn't. So loss of calcium is actually coming due to the sodium chloride of the sodium citrate. So the sodium is not causing it. It is basically, again, the chloride. We'll get to that. These preliminary findings demonstrate that the anionic components of the orally administered sodium salt can influence the ability of salt to increase blood pressure, uh, possibly by um, determining whether salt induced this in increase in uh, plasma volume, who gives a shit? Our observation is a small group of men with salt sensitivity hypertension will require confirmation in larger numbers of patients of both sexes. Obviously, this is an observational study with no control. Um, we would have to have a proper clinical or randomized control study with control. Otherwise, you're not going to get um, because there could be confounding variables, genetics, and all sorts of other things. So, but in general, what I'm trying to show you here is that it's not sodium that's actually causing the issue that's been falsely demonized. It's really chloride. Now, why? Now, chloride, if you're on a low-carbohydrate diet, 
it's actually probably a good thing to have a bit of chloride in there. Why? One, it acidifies the stomach. Hmm. The other important thing that I'll just mention shortly um, is very important for people on a low carbohydrate diet. Why? Because that chloride actually has an effect influence on insulin and means that in a state of low grade ketosis or a state of where you're on a carnival diet, that chloride actually supports slightly the insulin, which basically means you will not be that catabolic, which is quite unhealthy. It sort of explains why populations like the Inu or other very carnivorous populations around the world don't need carbs, but the extra protein that they have is simulating, plus the chloride that they're getting from the salt is probably stimulating even further this pathway, which is actually ameliorating some of the, the effects we would get in a therapeutic keto diet, which isn't a good thing long-term, very unhealthy, very catabolic, very stressful, and uh, um, for a number of reasons. So that's how you have to see it. So I'm always nuancing these things to understand the background of that regard. Now, I came across a very important project this project was done by the American Diabetes Association, that wonderful organization of truthfulness. Anyway, as far as you can throw them, but anyway, at least this PhD um, student was looking at chloride regulation of insulin secretion. So basically he's just talking about the description. Um, this has been completed. And basically they're looking at complications of that um, type two diabetes. And this is back in the, what is it? Um, project ended in December. I'm just waiting for the full publication of this. But from the title, you can actually work that they're talking about chloride. What is possible? What is happening? And I'll get into this in a in a sec. I'll just read the description. Type two diabetes and its complications are the seven leading cause of death in the USA. This complex disease and is now widely acknowledged to be due to pancreatic beta cell dysfunction and that translates into poor, into poor or insufficient insulin secretion, insulin secretion, guys, high glu and high glucose levels, which produce a lot of damage to the body. Obviously, if you fucked up your pancreas by overusing it multiple times because you're on a high sugar diet continuously guzzling down the sugar, you're basically going to eventually burn through your pancreas and cause a lot of better cell dysfunction. We know that happens. It happened to Tim Noakes, um, and he's on drugs now for life. He knows what, it, what caused it. It was the carb loading. So yes, this pro um, produced a lot of damage to the body, as we said, when better cells cannot produce enough insulin to manage nutrients. Type 2 diabetes in, um, endure initially insulin resistance, which is common in many patients, which is what happens initially before you fuck up your pancreas, um, with type 2 diabetes, and compensated because healthy better cells are able to produce more and more insulin as needed, and we'll get into that. Still, when this um, com compensatory mechanism is impaired or fails, then glucose levels cannot be maintained within the normal levels and invariably lead to increased blood sugar and type two diabetes. We know, you know eventually insulin starts falling, blood sugar starts rising uncontrollably, and then you have to get exogenous insulin injections okay like type 1 diabetics and that doesn't get that doesn't improve the situation that just compounds the damage uh, insulin secretion in response to nutrients is also a very complex function which is contingent to the change inside the beta cell and allows the right amount of insulin to be secreted at the right time we have focused our proposal on understanding the molecular and functional properties of ion transport calcium chloride and sodium the channel proteins pause and allow their flow into the cells or out within the intra and extracellular fluids um, that may be the target of new drugs. Well, that's all we need. More control of normal physiological functions rather than getting people off shit. Anyway, let's keep on. Several of these pores have been identified as better cells but in their role in insulin secretion is poorly understood. Obviously the proposal addressing the um, molecular um, 
cellular and functional mechanisms further to understand the insulin secretion response of nutrients that may provide the basis for a design of new drugs effective in simulating insulin secretion beta cells. Basically what they've come around to understanding is that basically, you know, chloride seems to have an effect on, on the actual improvements of the actual the actual regulation of insulin secretion. So what I suspect is happening is these people are basically getting like a pronounced effect. So what's actually happening is the chloride is basically stimulating their, their basically insulin, their better cells. And as a consequence, they're having this upregulation of insulin causing even more sodium retention, even more water retention and actually pushing up blood pressure. And that's where I think it's happening from. So it is via this indirect effect of chloride acting on beta cells. So it's a really interesting sort of thing. I'm waiting for the for the actual, you know, when it actually gets published, so I can actually properly show it to you guys. But they thought they sort of already given it away in the title, the chloride regulation of insulin secretion, and it's really important. You know, this is marrying, you know that initial information back in the 80s with this recent information, which still hasn't been officially sort of published. It's a project title, Chloride Regulation of Insulin Secretion, but it's gonna be really good once it gets published that we'll be able to tie the two together and say, it's not sodium guys, it's chloride acting on insulin that is actually driving it. So it doesn't matter whether it's potassium chloride or sodium chloride or any sort of chloride, the chloride is um, dry because of the insulin secretion. It sort of seems to be improving the functioning. So they're seeing it from a way of actually trying to create a drug. So they'll basically create one drug to basically keep your blood pressure down or they give chloride to basically push up the insulin to basically manage the sugar because they, might, they don't want to get the poor bastards off the actual sugar and roller coaster. There's plenty of money to be made to keep, keep them on there. So that's what the research is. That's where they're focused. But we can read through the lines in the actual research and realize the relationship of chloride with insulin and realize that it's never been sodium. It's really insulin. Fundamentally, it's insulin. It always has been insulin that is driving this. Now, just because something like chloride actually improves insulin response, it's actually a good thing. If you're on a low carbohydrate diet and you're eating a species appropriate diet, you need that extra chloride to stimulate the insulin for better muscle protein synthesis because you're eating a species appropriate diet. But if you're eating a whole lot of trash, sugar trash, obviously further stimulation is not what you want. You know, So that's the difference between them. We need to nuance it between the difference between a low carbohydrate species appropriate diet where chloride is actually having a positive um, effect and having a negative effect because you're actually eating negative shit at the same time with it. So just to, you know, cover that little point and demystify some of that sort of stuff, something, um, you know, your mate Harry always loves to basically you know, look at the esoteric stuff that people sort of ignore. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it.